All right, hey everybody, welcome to True Stream. Super excited to show another exercise. Uh, you know, last week we did the YouTube video of uh, the profile, okay? And uh, this week we're going to do three quarter, three quarter specifically for women. And I'm not the best at drawing women, so you're going to have to. Um, bear with me here and you know I thought long and hard about it and I was like man I'm not that's not my specialty but you know what I felt like um, we need to do this together we need to train together and and it, if it's something that we are not that good at we got to do it anyways you know to get better at it so um, that's why this week even though I don't really draw women too much, we're doing, we're drawing women, okay? And you can download this file and paint along with me by going to the, the link uh, just under the video, okay? And uh, if you're watching this in YouTube later on, you can just click on the link that you see there and come paint along with me, okay? So why is there a fuzzy image there of a woman's head it's because it's a lot easier to visualize things that are not there when you have something blurry there to kind of just start you off just like looking at the clouds um, and kind of picturing a, a train or looking at your stucco ceiling and visualizing things uh, through that you know if something is too contrasting then it actually gets a lot harder to visualize uh, things that are not there because you have already so much contrasting information and makes it even tougher okay so that's what it's all about it's gonna be fun I'm gonna be painting a bunch of different uh, women and the main thing is and you'll see in my video that it's not necessarily about um, painting amazing drawings ama amazing paintings or drawing amazing drawings you know this is an exercise so it doesn't matter how the thing turns out as you'll see there's gonna be some bad drawings there go there's gonna be some alright drawings um, but the main thing is that it doesn't matter what it turns out to be because it's an exercise. You're just you're working out your brain. Just like athletes, we have to work out our brains before really diving into uh, your work, you know, or your assignments or whatever it might be, uh, or your personal art, you know, warm up before that. Just like an athlete, we have to warm up to really get the potential out out of us. Um, so yeah, don't worry about the first bunch of drawings. They'll probably not be too good. And really, it's only towards the end that you might get one or two that might be half decent. But if they're not, that doesn't matter. Because what truly, truly matters is, and this is the secret, try to visualize the marks that you're going to make before you actually make them. And try to visualize them as crystal clear as possible to see is that what I want you know when you practice this and you become good at it you'll be able to visualize more and more not just structure not just lighting but hopefully you'll get into visualize being able to visualize colors with me and being able to visualize in time so what step are you going to do first what step are you going to do second what step are you going to do third this is a common thing that many professional artists are able to do whether they do it consciously or not um, it's definitely part of their toolkit okay so I see a whole bunch of people in the chat welcome to the chew stream let me give you a shout out why don't you tell me where you're from and I'll give you guys a shout out okay uh, it's always awesome to hear all the different people from all around the world all these different countries all getting together because they're hungry to learn hungry to develop good painting drawing skills and uh, we're all gonna get better together okay so we got 
San Diego, Florida, Quebec, Brazil, Serbia, Italy, Russia, London, Denmark, Spain, Utah, Buffalo, New Orleans, Germany, Singapore, India, California, Texas, Cali, Denmark, Scotland, Bangkok. Holy smokes. Wow. Lots of people today. Puerto Rico, right on. Mr. Clark's art class in, in uh, Melissa, Texas. Awesome. Ireland, Colombia, Romania. And Jason on here for the very first time. Right on. Right on, everybody. Cyprus, Netherlands, Minnesota. All right. Right on. So, if you're just joining for the very first time, we got a special treat. You know, you can look just underneath the video in live stream, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll find the link there. You can go and click on that link and download today's file. Paint on top of today's file and, uh, you know, do the exercise with me. Um, not only that, but when you click on the link, you put in your email address, you'll also be notified of future streams, which is very important because they're kind of sporadic uh, at the moment because my schedule is very sporadic. And so that is the best way to keep up uh, and to be informed of when the streams are, okay? Uh, you'll also get some awesome uh, updates of new classes, new events, new all sorts of stuff for artists. Okay, so great. Uh, some things I want to share. Okay, you can, you can, let's see if the stream has stopped here. But um, somebody's saying that the stream stopped. But you can ask me questions in the chat and I'll be happy to answer them okay let's see you know or you can just watch the stream and just uh, watch the drawings and draw at the same time now the challenge don't use any uh, reference okay this is all out of your head and a lot of times you might feel like you're struggling even more in the beginning but it's good for you you know would you rather draw things that don't make you struggle at all it's kinda like you're going to the gym and you're picking up instead of picking up the big weights you decide to pick up the soup cans and you're just lifting soup cans you know, it's all about the effort. If you don't have to put in the effort, then you're not lifting the big weights. And these are the weights for your mind, you know, the workout for your mind. A lot of people, they do warm-ups and things like that for drawing, where they're just making figure eight or circles, things like that, and, and not truly concentrating on anything that is going to warm up their brains mentally, right? Instead, they're warming up their muscles, which is good. But what controls the muscles? That's right. It's your brain. So you got to warm up the brain so that you'll be able to draw and paint better, not just the muscles in your arms. Okay? So, the other thing that we're doing is I'm giving away a free Schoolism workshop pass to either Montreal, which is happening next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend, March 14th and 15th, or Toronto, March 28th, 29th, or Calgary in April, okay? Or a free uh, Schoolism class, self-taught, uh, of your choice. So some really wonderful prizes that we're going to be giving away at the end of the stream. All you have to do is go to Twitter and tweet out this this stream and hashtag it ChewStream, C-H-I-U, stream, or you can go on to Facebook.com uh, slash Bobby.Chew, B-O-B-B-Y dot C-H-I-U, and you can share the very first post on there, or you can go to Instagram. Um, Digital Bobbert is my username. I don't know why I chose that, but uh, that is the name, and the very... F 
or the post about the chew stream there, you can you know post it online and uh, hashtag a chew stream and at the end of the stream I'm gonna pick one of those three avenues to pick a winner okay and first question is from Lucas how's it going Lucas so he's asking is there any place where I can buy your book the perfect bait in paperback uh, if there is I don't know you know, uh, that book has been sold out for a good while now. Hopefully, you know, I'll get to do a reprint of it. But right now, I just have uh, zero time for that at the moment. But I, I do hope to do that in the future. Um, yeah, along with our other books as well, because pretty much everything has been sold out for a while. Uh, but you could perhaps find it on eBay or something like that um, probably be overpriced but uh, it's up to you okay so hopefully you know I'll get to that reprint stuff later on uh, some really really cool stuff happening okay Montreal like I said, March 14th, 15th is Schoolism Live in Montreal. We're going to have Carla Ortiz in there. She does designs for um, Marvel movies right now. Uh, some really killer talent. We have Alex Wu, story artist at Pixar. He's going to be teaching story. How can you get better than that? Paula Zane. One of the very few people that I would say is a master, a master painter. He's coming to Montreal. He's going to be teaching. He's going to be demonstrating three different techniques in painting. And in four hours, he's going to be doing like three paintings, which is going to be incredible. Um, we also have Christophe Lautret. Wow. Production designer. At DreamWorks, uh, production designer on Crudes, I believe, as well as other amazing uh, movies. And production designer is in charge of the art director. So if you ever want to be a concept artist and had a goal of getting to art director, well, he would be actually your boss. You know, that's the high position that he holds. So that's going to be incredible. But many of you, I know, are also talking about Toronto, March 28th, 29th. We got Oscar-winning director Brenda Chapman, director Kevin Lima. We have Steven Silver, Sam Nielsen, Helen Mingju Chen, and dun, 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 for the first time in Toronto, for the first time in North America in a long time, for the first time doing a workshop in North America and perhaps forever, Claire Wendling, one of my absolute artistic heroes. I am so honored, so pleased to be able to bring my friend Claire to a Schoolism Live workshop. You know, we're trying to hype things up every year, get things better and better, and for sure, this is going to be a hard one to top. Claire Wendling, uh, you know, drawing at, school is, at the Schoolism workshop. Holy smokes. Okay, so let's go to, on, of course, can't forget Calgary. Calgary. Expo. The Calgary Expo is a wonderful expo that I haven't been to for quite a while. Um, this year is its 10th year, so it's going to be huge. Stan Lee is going to be there. Also, Stan Lee Lau is going to be there. Art Germ. He's going to be doing a workshop with Schoolism Calgary. Uh, Schoolism Live Calgary, and we're going to have Stanley Archer Lau. We're going to have Nathan Fawkes there. We're going to have Steven Silver there, and I'm going to be there, hang out. Kay's going to be there, hang out. Three awesome reasons to come and visit Canada. You know, Calgary Workshop, Toronto Workshop, Montreal Workshop. Boom. 
Maya, it's her birthday. Let's uh, wish her a happy birthday in the chat there. Happy birthday, Maya. Big shouts out to you. Um, hope you're doing awesome. Now, let's see here. Let's go to the question here. So, hi Bobby, this is the question. Whenever I do warm-ups, my pencil just moves blindly with a very vague image in my head or in mind. Is that also part of the process? Yeah, that very vague image, keep trying to sharpen that image. Okay, that is the exercise here, visualizing, like I'm trying to visualize the hair on this girl as I'm drawing it, and really trying to visualize it before I draw it down and see, is that what I want? Is that how I want the, the woman's hair to be? You know, so on and so forth. That vague image that you're talking about in your mind, that very vague image will become sharper. It'll become sharper and sharper as you keep practicing. Okay, so I hope that, hope that uh, answered your question. Next question. Okay, I like this question because I like to travel. This person goes, hey Bobby, are, what are the best conventions or conferences to attend for concept artists? Conferences, um, you know, workshops, I'm biased, but you know what? I totally, I've been to a lot of workshops. And from my own experiences, education wise, you know, schoolism is pretty darn good I'd have to admit like my team that I work with to build these these amazing uh, workshops the teachers that we invite everything I feel like that's something that if you go once you're gonna go again and you're not gonna regret it so conventions though let's talk about conventions for sure, the biggest one is San Diego Comic Con. And I'm saying biggest one, not geographically, but I'm saying I measure it in this way, okay? Network possibilities, networking possibilities for you know future projects and things like that. And financially, if you are uh, displaying there and things like that, San Diego is the best. The other ones I really like, CTN, that one's a great one in Burbank, that happens in November. CTN Expo, okay, if you search for that. Another one that I go to every year has been Angoulême, France, end of January, beginning of February. It's just a great reason to go hang out with friends in France. Um, then there's also... Uh, while I go to the Toronto Fan Expo. That one's quite big. I wouldn't say as much uh, for networking, perhaps, but it's an awesome event. I've been going there for years, and that's actually the very first one I went to. And it's in my hometown, Toronto, Canada, so uh, it's, it's pretty easy for me. Luca Festival in Italy, I hear is amazing never been there yet but on my list I've heard very good things about uh, Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle I believe that's this weekend not totally sure about that but I think so um, Calgary Expo like I was saying Calgary Wow they bring in a lot of guests let me tell you like they bring in a lot of uh, incredible guests uh, especially like big names like TV stars, movie stars, that kind of thing. It's very cool. Um, okay, there's a bunch of questions coming in. So I want to try to make sure I get to all of them, copy them down. 
Okay, so in an Annecy, it's not really a convention, right? It's a film festival, but I am dying to go to Annecy. Um, okay, so let's go to the next question here, which says there are two gesture drawing courses, one, or which says that it is Alex Wu uh, teaches them both, but that Luis Gonzalez provides feedback for one of them. Are the courses the same or are they different? The lessons are the same. You know, Alex and Lewis, they both teach the gesture drawing class at Pixar. So they created the course together. Um, that's why they teach the same course. You know, so you can either get feedback from Lewis, you know, join up for a class where you can get feedback from Lewis, or and watch the lessons that Alex recorded or uh, get feedback from Alex. I believe, I'm not too sure, but I believe Luis Gonzalez actually has a class open right now and Dustin Clark is vouching for him saying Luis Gonzalez is great, my wife took it, uh, took the class and uh, so I agree. You know, it's very, very, it's such a special opportunity. You know, if you're a fan of Pixar films, things like that, well, you're learning from the source, the person that teaches uh, gesture drawing for the people at Pixar. How can you go wrong with that? Okay. And again, I just want to remind you now that everybody is probably, you know, drawing away and maybe you're not drawing anything that you like too much at the moment. It's not about the drawings, okay? It's not about the drawings. It's all about the effort, the practice. Uh, it's a workout, okay? And that's the only thing that you really need to, you know, concentrate on. In fact, that's kind of like a mantra for life, you know. It's not about first place or last place. First or last place doesn't matter if you measure by how much effort you put in. If it's 100% all the time, good things will happen. That's one of the most truest statements I can make. That and common sense. You know, you can put in a lot of effort running straight into a brick wall, but that, you know, if you don't have common sense, it's not going to help you, right? Common sense would stop you and go, run the other way. So, uh, let's go to this next question. And the question goes, what are you reading at the moment, Bobby? Anything? Actually, I, I am. I'm reading... Uh, Tony Robbins new book it's like mastering the money game or something like that it's a financial book uh, but it's pretty interesting um, I am Canadian so some of the things money mastering the game that's what it's called but some of the things that he says in the book is very much pertain to just Americans like 401k and stuff like that so um, it's not the easiest read in the world if you're uh, not American because not everything applies to you. Um, let's go to the next question. So the next question goes, so do I draw the same image over and over again? I haven't got on to the process of understanding lighting, lighting and shadow though. Uh, you're drawing from the same base every time, but you'll see, you know, it's my own paintings, they're going to go from one kind of woman to another kind of woman, an old, older woman, younger woman, to different styles, to all sorts of things. Uh, that's the wonderful thing about this is that this, you're going to see many different styles as well. So this practice is not going to dictate your style it's only going to help your style and help you visualize what it is you want to draw better and better. So
So Toby asks, uh, so it's kind of like gesture drawing when learning to draw figures. It is, but it's in a different method. So if you imagine figure drawing, you're usually you're figure drawing from a blank page, right? Where you have to visualize everything. You're starting from nothing. You're starting from a blank slate. Now, a lot of times that is very difficult. But imagine this. Imagine instead of not giving you, uh, you know, not being able to ride a bike at all, and then I just give you a bike, no training wheels, right, straight from nothing, and you want to try to learn how to ride a bike. That's going to be a lot harder than if you had training wheels. Well, the fuzzy low opacity image that I've supplied for you are the training wheels. And you can see I'm basing my figure heads, my heads off of that same image. Right? And when you do that, it becomes so much easier to visualize. And then later on, what's going to happen is I'm going to start erasing the face. And then I have even less to work off of. But because I drew on there quite a bunch of times, a few times, I've kind of warmed up my mind and when I erase everything, I'll still be able to visualize that face there. At least I'll be able to visualize it way better and you'll be able to visualize it way better than if you just started off just with nothing. You get it? This is a very, very effective way to be able to expand your visual library, increase your ability to visualize, and learn how to draw things straight out of your head. Because even if you are struggling through this, guess what? You're improving. Do you struggle with heavy weights when you're trying to live, lift heavy weights? I would hope so. You know, if you're not struggling, you're not going to improve as much. Struggling is evolution happening right before your your eyes. You know, your brain is starting to evolve into this more complex, more advanced brain that's able to visualize even better. Okay, let's go on to uh, the next question here. So the next question goes, uh, whenever I draw people in their environments, I'm not able to come up with good pictures all the time. How do you get better pictures every day? I had a sketch group for one year and had bad drawings most of the time. Well, it's great that you ended up here because these exercises that I'm going to do with you guys um, regularly, you know, is going to tackle different, different kind of problems and how to solve them. So this one in particular is how to is starting to increase your uh, your mental library of how to draw. A woman in three quarters and I guarantee you this if you practice this and just play this video over and over again and you draw with me and you do this maybe just a week where you do this every day just listen to the video for an hour and draw with me for an hour I guarantee you you're gonna be able to visualize the head of a woman three-quarter view noticeably better people will notice in just one week okay so stay with me stay stick to the rules don't use any reference just draw thinking about trying to visualize trying to visualize that woman whatever it is you're gonna draw better and better over and over again try to make it kind of hard for yourself you know try to visualize something so clear that it is super sharp you can see it very very clearly which is very difficult to do you know 
All right, let's go on to the next question here, which is, what are the elements for making a success, successful or great character design? I think the real thing that you want to look for in a great or successful character design is that it's memorable, that it's very easily understood. If you just looked at it for you know, under three seconds, would you understand what this character is if that character is supposed to be very easily understood? That's what you want. You know, can you remember, well, can many of you remember what the E.T. alien looked like? Maybe that's a bad example because some of you are a bit younger and maybe have never watched E.T. before, but maybe, okay, how about Yoda? Can you remember what Yoda looks like exactly? Pretty darn close, right? Can you remember, um, you know, what's another good example? You know, another good alien or whatever creature character design example you know can you remember what Lilo and Stitch look like Stitch especially right that's a great character design okay so um, next question here let's go to the next question here's a question on learning after completing a life drawing master study or composition study, how do you take what you learned and apply it, apply it to imaginative uh, work? Well, try to sketch it out without even looking at it. How much did you actually retain? Just by doing that, you know what you're doing? You're increasing your ability to visualize. You're increasing your mental library. Really great artists have huge mental libraries. They do. Whether it's of their own stuff or whether it's of things in life, whatever it might be, it's true. They have giant mental libraries. So for us to expand our mental library, that's what we're doing here. You know, because you have no help and you're just trying to draw. Just trying to draw uh, a girl's head, and you're just going to do your best. And the next time that you actually um, see a great picture of a girl, a three-quarter view, or perhaps see somebody walking down the street, three-quarter view, you can totally start to notice the things that you had trouble with. Like, what are those subtle shadows in the eyes? Really, what are they? Where are they from? Right? How big should that chin be? How, how much uh, definition are in those cheeks and so on and so forth? Okay. Next question is from Mr. Clark. My class wants to know, what's your favorite color? Uh, or even, what's your favorite color scheme? Man, that's a tough one. I guess I would say my favorite color is green. <laughs> I don't know why, but I guess if I had to pick one, it would be green. Um, favorite color schemes, it depends. You know, I definitely, of course, I would find the analogous color scheme, the monochromatic color scheme, a lot simpler to do. So you don't have that many choices. But, uh, like a, a tertiary, uh, triadic color scheme is going to be a lot harder to kind of balance everything out, things like that. Um, I think the main thing is that we're just on this never-ending road to learning as much as we can. Life is like the biggest mystery in the world that nobody really explained to us, and we had to try to figure it out for ourselves. You know, how awesome is that? 
So I think uh, the main thing is, is that you really adopt the idea that you're a student for life. Um, and really learn all the different kinds of color schemes, color theories, you know, everything and anything you can and apply it to your art until it becomes your own. Uh, let's go to the next question. Great question. When are you going to start appearing in Southeast Asia? I would love to. You know how... Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. I would love to. Right now, I don't have any immediate plans. But as soon as uh, I get a couple things off my plate, I'm going to be looking at where to go next. And that's going to happen uh, pretty soon. So who knows? Never say never. I just don't have any plans right now. Thank you for asking. So the next question is, I'd hate to be that person, but does anyone know what program he's using right now? This is Autodesk Sketchbook. Used to be called Sketchbook Pro, now it's just called Sketchbook. And uh, as you can see, it, it is kind of like a sketchbook. You can really do some pretty fun drawings in there, as well as painting, things like that. Um, I like to use it because sketching-wise, it's so loose and easy keeps everything very fluid um, and it's very much designed for a mobile experience as well so it's great let's see here let's see what the next question is um, So next, next question is, I have an interview for a storyboard position today here in Toronto. Any advice? Concentrate on what you can offer the studio. Stay away from what this job will mean to you. Because in the grand scheme of things, what's really going to get you hired is if the person understands how you are going to benefit the studio more than what the studio is paying you. You can get a job just about anywhere if there is enough, uh, enough of an advantage for the company. Even when they're not looking for a job, you can still get a job in places uh, if you just explain to them this is what you would benefit. Lita is saying, did my question get skipped? I'm so sorry. I don't, you know what? I'm not sure <laughs> if your question got skipped. I'm trying to do a bunch of things and I'm trying to cut and paste the questions into the chat as well. So just type it out again and I'll, I'll uh, copy it and paste it in my list of questions. Do you have any tips? Next question is, do you have any tips on drawing a character that looks like it's alive or flows with its environment? Um, making things feel believable. I think that's your question in a nutshell. How do you make things feel more believable? You know, feel more alive, flows better with the environment, things like that. It's all about subtleties. And this is something that my wonderful friend uh, Jason Seiler taught me many, many years ago. That subtleties is what makes things believable. The subtlety in a gesture where maybe the fingers are not all lined up together, but there's a subtle curl amongst the, or with the pinky finger, or there's a subtle twist in the angle of the head, things like that, or there's subtle tones in the sky that just kind of gives it that warmth, things like that. Um, that's how you make things believable. Uh, one thing I want to mention though, which is and has been very important for me and 
what I've been able to do um, you know the really cool things I've been able to do over the years is that you want to get into the habit of rethinking how we do things don't always just look up the answer because looking up the answer is not going to uh, create evolution it's not going to create an advancement in the overall scheme of things it's only going to tell you what somebody else already did to make it work and sometimes the best things to do is just get in the habit of rethinking how we do things don't just follow instructions all the time think about if there's a better way okay so let's go to Lita's question what do you think or know about the Atelier method for learning fundamentals? Uh, which Atelier are you speaking of? I'm not sure, but um, generally, fundamentals, you know, still life paintings and things like that, those are extremely valuable, but only if you do it in the right way. If you're trying to become a concept artist and all you are doing is matching up colors that you see that's not going to help you become a concept artist but if you are doing still lifes and you're thinking about why am I seeing this why am I seeing that you know really questioning everything and aiming to understand everything from the ground up then you'll be able to reconstruct it again in different ways for example dramatic lighting if you're seeing all these dark dark shadows everywhere and you're just matching up the tones it's not going to help you nearly as much as if you're thinking about the exposure of light the light direction bounce light all those different things that's what's going to help you that's what you will be able to take away and be able to help do something like concept art where you're really you're creating things out of your head um, so let's go to the next question here um, there's a where's the next question so how do you choose the warm-up that you do each day do you have a regular regiment through the week? You know, example, uh, guys' heads, and then on Monday, and then Tuesday, women's heads, etc. You know, there is no specific kind of route that I go, but I do like to concentrate on one subject at a time. So I'm starting with you guys just on heads we're just gonna paint a bunch of heads for you know the first few times uh, before moving on to something else and then when we move on to something else then we're gonna be doing a bunch of different variations of that in different ways because it's just like if you're working out you want to really concentrate on a specific muscle group right same kind of idea I'm not gonna do two jumping jacks go do two push-ups go do two sit-ups and so on and so forth and expect to be ripped by the end of the month you know what I mean so um, what I want to do with this is really create something that you can do uh, hopefully we have enough of these later on that you can do one a day and go through the regiment, right? Go through each one, one every day. And by the time you're through all of them, you're going to see a noticeable difference. Your friends will see a noticeable difference. Everybody will see a noticeable difference in your skill levels just from going through these practices with me. Okay, these are the same practices that I've done to help me become a concept artist, become a character designer, do the things that I'm doing now. And that's why I want to share them with you. 
Okay, so let's go to the next question. The question goes, can you talk about what you're working on now? Uh, I'm working on a, an animated film. Can't really say anything beyond that. Um, also working on workshops and a Kickstarter campaign that's going to be the most important thing that I've done uh, to this day. So really excited to share that with you guys in the upcoming weeks, uh, hopefully before the end of this month. And um, it truly is something that I feel is going to be one of the most important things I'll ever, that I would have ever done thus far uh, in terms of affecting the art community in a positive way. Yeah, so I wish I could tell you more, but it'll have to come out uh, in time, okay? So <clears throat> let's go on to the next question here. The next question says, uh, do you have any advice for people who struggle with color? I know all about color schemes and basic color theory, but my stuff usually turns out dull and muddy. Any ideas for exercises? You know, that is that is such an easy one. Um, struggling with color? Yeah, totally. It's very difficult. Color is very difficult to understand. Um, and, you know, when I was in school, I don't know about you guys, but when I was in school, man, you know, I was just, I was taught uh, green is the complementary color to uh red and you know different color schemes and so on and so forth but then what what do I do do I you know if I want to do a complementary color scheme do I just paint a red and green painting no you're supposed to have one color be the majority and accented with the other color if they're both the same it's there's going to be too much contrast all over the place. If there's the same amount of green as there is red, there's going to be too much contrast all over the place, and it won't look good. You know, um, how does light work to manipulate colors and things like that, the colors that we see? How do we see colors? How do we interpret what we see? And, you know, so on and so forth. There's a few really great schoolism classes for that. Okay, one is Dice Tsutsumi's and Robert Kondo's class, Painting with Light and Color. Next one is uh, Nathan Fawkes's class, Designing with Light and Color. And there's also Sam Nielsen, he has two classes, Fundamentals of, fundamentals of Lighting. And the other one is lighting for concept art. I would suggest taking uh, either Nathan's class, Fundamentals class with Sam, or Daisutsumi and Robert Kondo's class as the beginning class. Okay. Um, Sam Nielsen's other class where it's about... Uh, lighting for concept art that one you want to take if you're a bit more advanced if you knew if you know quite a bit already and you want to improve further okay so um, let's go to the next question here which is, do you ever zoom in on your work? Sometimes I have to force myself not to zoom in and get lost in the details. Yes, I, you know, I'll zoom in into my work, but I try not to as much as possible because then you paint a lot faster. You know, when you're painting a small painting, you're going to paint a lot faster. 
Confuse Art says, uh, nice exercise, Bobby. It really helps. Thank you so much. Right on. You know, I, I know it helps. That's totally why I'm putting these together because, you know what? It takes me a little effort, but seeing the reaction, seeing the results of everybody's stuff, seeing uh, the wonderful encouraging comments and things like that, you know, it's totally worth it. If I could spend, you know, a couple hours putting something together that can help hundreds or thousands of people, I'm sure everybody would do that, you know. So you're absolutely welcome, and it's my... It's my pleasure. It's my honor to be able to help you know any of you on your journey uh, to becoming an artist or becoming even better in art than you already are, affecting your lives in a positive way. That's that's the goal, right? So let's go to the next question. Do you have any advice for artists who went to art school but are struggling with student debt? What if you have a stable job but are afraid of risking risking it and going for your uh, dream art job? Wow. Wow. You know, I totally feel for you. That's the messed up thing about, you know, I went to college. I went to Sheridan College. I had a great experience. It was very nice. I learned... Um, you know, I learned a good amount, perhaps. I don't feel like I was totally ready for a professional job after. I couldn't get a job after, but the people that I met were very, very helpful in the beginning. Um, and I think that's one of the best advantages to going to college or university. But college, university... We go there because we want an advantage. We want to get ahead in our careers and things like that. The unfortunate thing is when you can't afford the tuition or governments give you these giant loans and when you finish school you have to pay them off so what ends up happening is that it starts to affect the decisions that you'll make. You know, I can't do this because I already have all this debt. Oh, I can't take this job yet because I have to stay at this, uh, you know, security guard job because I have to pay off this debt. Things like that. Oh, I need to take that job even though that isn't the job that I really truly want to have. Why? Because I need to take care of that debt. That's a very kind of... It's kind of like this two-sided blade, you know, two, where, yes, I want the advantage of that awesome knowledge and, you know, um, pretty much that's, that's what we're looking for, right? To help us get ahead in our careers. But at the same time, as you're getting that, you're putting yourself into massive debt that's going to, a lot of times, be a big huge disadvantage of you when you end up you know going out there in the world when you finish school all of a sudden you have this massive debt that you have to take care of um, that's something you know if you can afford a Ferrari then totally get the Ferrari but if you can't get a Ferrari or you can't afford a Ferrari don't get the Ferrari because in the end what we're looking for is something that we can afford that will get us ahead in life if we can't afford it it's gonna put us behind what do you do when you're actually you know you you took school you have the debt what do you do now you gotta fight you gotta fight real hard you know you got to Try to be that irreplaceable person once you get that job. You got to put in more effort. You got to, if you're a person that's only there to get coffee, 
don't just get coffee. If you're only getting paid to get coffee, don't just get coffee. Don't be one of those people that go, well, I'm only getting paid for this, so I'm only going to do this. Nobody's going to give you more because they don't expect any more from you. But if you just constantly try to do more, do things that nobody's even asking you to do, then that's how you're going to climb the ladder real quick. I guarantee it. You know, replaceable people are the ones that stand by for instructions. Valuable people look for the next move even before the first task is done. Even before the person asks you, you already got it prepared. You're already working on it. And then when they do ask you, you can go, bam, check that out. I'm already doing it. Watch how fast you're going to climb the ladder when you're that kind of person. That's the thing. And, and this is coming from a person that, you know, runs a studio. So I, I don't, I'm not just the artist, but I also employ. And it would be very hard for me to justify giving somebody a raise if all they're doing is the bare minimum. You know, it's so funny because it totally makes sense the uh, from the other point of view as well. Oh, I'm not going to do more. You know, I'm only getting paid this. That makes sense too, but only from your point of view. It won't make sense from the employer's point of view. How could they even know that you're going to do well doing more? Right? Be because you're not doing it right now. Anyhow, um... That's something I, I wish I, I was taught in school. Um, so next question. I notice that you draw the portraits with stylized eyes sometimes. What determines how, how you stylize the eyes and other features? Just my imagination. You know, you just, I just kind of go with it. And, and uh, that's the great thing about this exercise, isn't it? This witch face is completely different from the first bunch of faces that I did. And that just reinforces the whole entire point of this exercise, that it is an, the, the head that you're working off of is a base. It doesn't mean that you have to go with it exactly. It's there to inspire you. It's there to help you visualize even more. So it totally works. As you can see, my first drawing to this drawing, I like this drawing. I hated all the other <laughs> beginning drawings. I didn't like any of them. You know, so it does work. As you get warmed up, you'll see that your drawings get better and better. And your ability to visualize gets better and better. And your day gets better and better because you're already warmed up and going through your assignments, going through your, uh, you know, different jobs and things like that you'll find that they'll come a lot easier because you've already done the warm-up, okay? All right. Let's go to the next question here. The next question is kind of, it's much more of a compliment. Um, I'll just read it anyways. How did you get to be kind thank you you know thank you so much you know the main thing is is that um, I try to believe in good things I try to believe in things that will help me and help others you know I, I try to believe that if if you give back then the world will give back to you as well you know, if you change a person's life that's in a positive way, wow, what an honor that is, you know, and and really, why wouldn't you? You got to be pretty messed up if you have the opportunity to help people and and it doesn't take that much out of you, and but you just kind of stare at them and you don't. Um, and 
definitely you guys sending me the messages, sending me the emails and things like that, that has helped tremendously as well to encourage me to do more and more. You can see that the face here, it's barely a face, right? We can barely even see anything at this point. But since we went through the exercise, since I went through the exercise with you, you know, it's much easier to see things which is the wonderful part about this exercise. And when you're done this exercise, when you are done this exercise, post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook, post it on uh, Twitter, and hashtag it with the hashtag ChewStream. And then I'll find them. As many of you have already done, you know that I am actually looking at them. And it's awesome to be able to look at them. And hopefully it'll be awesome for you knowing that I'm that people are looking at them even if it's just me you know it'll help to encourage you you don't even have to by the end of it you don't even have to draw a woman's face perhaps perhaps you could do more like an alien woman or something like that uh, you know and just start to get a bit more interesting with it Okay, um, you know, speaking of being kind to people, you know, something that I believe is that our hearts and our minds are the doors to success and happiness. You have to keep them open, or else you're going to miss out on great opportunities. So, Let's see, we're getting pretty close to uh, the full hour. Um, if you have not gone on to facebook.com slash and, uh and shared the, the post there, do it now because in a few minutes I'm going to select just a random person off of Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, any of these. And uh, I'm gonna award somebody a free, you know, school schoolism uh, live workshop pass to either Calgary, Montreal, or Toronto, or a free schoolism class, self-taught class uh, for any of you um, out there that I select. Okay. And. Something that I, uh, I've i said before, but it is so important, so I'm going to say it again. You know, if anything that I say on the stream you don't agree with, you don't have to do it. You know, you totally don't, don't do it. But if it does make sense to you, and this goes for anything in your life, if people tell you something that doesn't make sense to you, then you don't have to follow it. Don't do it. But if it does make sense to you, if anything does make sense to you, then we have to do it. Because there's too many of us that know exactly what we need to do, but we just don't do it. Am I right? You know what I mean? If you know that there's something that will take you to that next level, you got to go for it. you got to do it. And if you are in Montreal, Toronto, or Calgary, I highly recommend that you come to the workshop and you see what it's all about and you see what people are talking about because a lot of these people, it might be your only chance to really meet them and to talk to them and so on and so forth. You know, how do you get to that next level in your career, in your life? You know, I, I try to think of life as a game. Uh, I'm just trying to play to win, trying to get to that next level, and that's it. You know, what goal do you need to achieve to level up? Write it down. Put it on your monitor. Put it, you know, on your bathroom mirror so you see it every day. Remind yourself. If it makes sense to you, remind yourself all the time so that you will do it. You know, don't just brush it aside. Okay, so why don't we 
go I'm gonna go and look for a winner to give the uh, free class to today what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick somebody on should it be Twitter guys should it be Instagram should it be Facebook which one which one you tell me okay so you know what I'm just gonna go for one I'm gonna go for Facebook so I'm just gonna expand all the different shares okay so the very f or the winner is dun, 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 dun. scroll randomly stop and man it's always these names that I cannot pronounce so uh, please excuse my pronunciation I'm not even gonna try but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post it into the chat okay this person is from France. Congratulations to you, Mr. Pipart. I don't know how to say your first name, so I apologize. I hope that um, I don't offend you because of that. But I just don't want to ruin, because I, I know I'm not going to get it right. OK, so congratulations to Mr. Pipart. Uh, I'm going to be contacting you today on Facebook and yeah that's that's pretty much it so thank you so much for showing up tuning in and uh, okay <laughs> yeah thank you so much for tuning in and we're gonna do this again I'm gonna get ready for another stream this coming Tuesday, okay, if you're on live stream, you can check out my other events. I already put it up. You can check that out and uh, subscribe or whatever, put it in your calendar. Um, if you downloaded this file uh, to paint off of, then you're going to get an email reminder. So then it'll be a lot easier to keep track of, okay? Uh, there you go. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. Take care, everybody.